Today, I'm using Google's new anti-gravity AI editor to build and deploy a full stack web app from scratch. I'm going to show you exactly how this tool helps you stop being a code brick layer and start being the architect who runs the show. I'm Martin. Google recently released Anti-Gravity, which is an agentic development environment. That means instead of just autocomplete, it has autonomous agents that can plan, code, and test your software. This might feel like a big shift, but it's actually just the next step in a 70-year evolution. In the 1950s, engineers wrote machine code. Then, Compilers arrived, allowing us to focus on logic rather than binary. We didn't stop the building, we just stopped doing the low-level grunt work. AI tools like Antigravity are the modern compiler. They promote you from being a bricklayer, manually laying every brick, to being the architect. You create the blueprint and the AI lays the bricks. To show you this shift, I'm going to build GuestPass. It's a full stack web app that solves a universal problem for cafes, hotels, and libraries. Guests asking for Wi-Fi password. You enter the Wi-Fi details once and it generates a QR code card that can be printed and displayed. Guests can scan it and join instantly. No more crawling under the desk to read the router. We're deploying this to Cloud Run but I won't write the code. I'm going to manage the agents who do. Let's open Antigravity, create a new directory for the GuestPass app and start drafting. Here we are in mission control in the Antigravity editor. Now a beginner would just type, make a Wi-Fi app, but an architect writes a spec sheet. If you want quality code, you have to give quality requirements. I'm pasting in my requirements and I want you to notice three specific things I'm telling the agent. First, I specified Tailwind via CDN. My experience as a developer is telling me that I don't need a complex front end build pipeline for a simple tool like this. I'm keeping the architecture lean. Second, look at this critical note. I told it not to save the generated QR codes on the server. Remember, these images contain actual Wi-Fi passwords. If we store them, we're creating a security risk. That's the architect protecting the user. And third, and this is my favorite part, I'm forcing you to use a modern version of Node.js. Usually, TypeScript requires a compile step, but I know that modern Node versions can run TypeScript natively a brick layer would copy paste an old complex docker file. As the architect, I'm deleting the build step entirely. All right, the spec is locked in. Let's see what it builds. Over here on the left, I can see what the agent is doing. I've told Antigravity to use its own judgment for when to ask me to confirm a step. This is the default setting, by the way. As you can see, it uh, proceeds pretty much by itself. Over here on the right, I can see the various artifacts it's creating. Here is the implementation plan, for example. When working with other AI tools, I often created an implementation plan myself, but Antigravity does it for me. I can, of course, edit it. Uh, more on that later. Aha! It built the app and is now running it in a web browser. Look at the blue dot moving on the screen. No hands, that is not my mouse pointer, is the tool independently navigating and clicking through the app to test it. When working with other AI tools in the past, I would often test the app manually in a web browser and then copy paste any errors back into the tool. No need for that anymore. It ran the test successfully and it added a screenshot of it to the artifacts. Again, I would do this manually when using other tools, but Antigravity does it for me. We're seeing a trend here. The team who built Antigravity has taken semi-manual processes that work well with AI and automated them. All those best practices are baked in so we don't have to think about them. 
I like it. But here is one thing I don't like. It looks like it only tested the happy path in the browser. I'll tell it to test the case when the user doesn't enter a network name. That should create some sort of message to the user instead of creating a bad QR code. Let's see. Antigravity added the test case to the implementation plan. Good, good. Uh, then it ran the happy path test again. Yeah, that's fine. Ah, there is the new test case I added. It cleared the network name field and clicked the generate button. A message appeared and no QR code was created. Excellent. Now that I have better test cases in place, let me show you one of my favorite features of Antigravity. It generates these artifacts along the way, uh, like this task list, and I can add comments to them, just like in a Google Doc. I don't have Docker installed on my laptop, so I will add a comment about how it shouldn't do a local Docker build. Then I click the blue submit button. The tool removed that from the task list and won't do it again for this app. Nice. Now I'm a developer, so I really like to see the code. If I'm going to submit it under my name, I want to review it first, every last semicolon of it. Also, I may want to make some edits to it. If I click this icon here, I get a regular code editor view, just like I'm used to. I can even accept or reject the edits made by the tool. All right, let's deploy this app to my dev project to make sure it works in the cloud. Cloud Run is a great place to host apps because it's serverless and I don't have to worry about scaling or paying for idle capacity. You know, Cloud Run is kind of like a cheat code. It allows us to be serverless. I don't have to provision a VM or configure Nginx or anything like that. I just hand Google the container and it gives me a secure scalable URL. It allows the infrastructure to move as fast as the AI writing the code. I never remember the gcloud command for deploying to Cloud Run, so I'll just ask Antigravity to deploy for me. And here is why that architect work earlier matters. Because we created that specific Node23 Docker file, Cloud Run will use our blueprint. It won't guess, it executes exactly what we as architect designed. This will take a few minutes. You know what that means. Tea break. Oh no, there was a deployment error. In the past, I would have to find the error in the logs, do a search for that error message, figure out what needs to be changed, and then make the update. But Antigravity is smart enough to figure it out by itself. Right here, it says, deployment failed due to port mismatch. Cloud Run expects 8080, app used 3000. And it's fixing the problem without my intervention. That saved a lot of time. Now, the cloud still needs a minute to process the new deployment. I can't speed that up. But here's the difference. I'm waiting and maybe having a cup of tea, but I'm not working. I'm not frantically searching Stack Overflow. I'm just letting the agent handle the retry. And it says deployment complete. The application is now live on Cloud Run. I'll click the public URL. Ah, there's my app. I'll enter a fake network name and password. And it created a QR code as expected. The app works in the cloud too, not only on my machine. So what are the big takeaways from building the guest pass app today? First, the shift is real. You are no longer a bricklayer typing syntax. You are the architect using your valuable skills to design the blueprint. Second, anti-gravity is agentic. It doesn't just write code. It wrote an implementation plan, caught errors, and drove the terminal itself. And finally, Cloud Run is kind of like a cheat code. It allows the infrastructure to move as fast as the AI writing the code. I handed Google the container and it gave me a secure global URL. Thank you everyone for watching. If you have any questions for me, please add them in the comments. 
Also, please let me know what you thought of today's episode. I read every single comment. Now you have the tools, you have the skills. I can't wait to see what you build.